Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy. Today I'm looking at something a little bit different. I'm not looking at a system. I'm going to be looking at a project that was done by a gentleman called Daniel Mantion. I hope I got that right. And I saw this originally on Adrian's Digital Basement. Now, one of the most common failures with the Commodore 64 is either the SID or the PLA chip. There are various different things out for replacing the SID. In a previous episode that I've done, I used the Swin SID to replace a faulty SID in my Commodore 64 GS. However, I'm going to be looking at one of the cheapest and one of the most compatible PLA drop-ins that's out there. Done by a gentleman called Daniel Mantion and this tiny little circuit board does it all. If we take out the fact you're going to need a TL866 programmer, then this is the entire thing. A pair of IC sockets, the board, a strip of pin header, and a pair of GAL chips. These are going to be programmed and this is the entire board. This will replace the PLA in the Commodore 64. So let's talk about cost. How much is this going to cost you? Well, as of September 2021, when I'm recording this, the cheapest PLA I can find starts at £20 UK sterling and goes up from there. You can then add in shipping because most people that are selling them are not based in the UK, a lot from Germany. To give you a comparable price, now I'm doing this for a set of 10 and I'm doing this for a set of 10 because I want to be able to just sell some of these on to people who want to bring their C64 back to life and I'm not looking to make money really on this, I'm just looking to make back some costs. So the average price these are selling for on eBay is about £10, including postage. Yeah, I, I can do that for a lot cheaper because I'm not looking to make money out of this venture. As long as I cover my fees and everything, that's fine. So to give you an idea, 10 of the project boards delivered at the time was about $12 or £9.60. Your 20 pieces of IC sockets to go with the 10, $1.35 and 68 cents shipping or in the UK a pound and eight pence for tw um, 20 pieces of these and 55 pence shipping your uh, gold-plated 40-pin round pin header strips, 10 pieces to a pack at £2.42 per pack. Uh, and that was shipped with the sockets, so it shared the shipping cost. And then the gal chips, which are no longer in production, but they're still readily available. These are fully programmable and a lot of the time when you buy them they're being lifted out of other things as long as they work, that's fine. And 10 of these delivered $12 or £9.60. Not expensive if you consider that's for 10 of them, not for just building one, that's for 10. Now I'm going to have to factor in the TL8662 that I purchased, which is fine, no issue there. 
that was $38.59 posted, which was what, £30.87. Now this will do many other things. I have had to purchase one of these for another project I'm looking at. I'm not going to say what it is, you might have seen it already. But this works with this programmer. So let's start by looking at assembly. So assembly of the, the main board is very, very simple and straightforward. Everything's laid out for you. You can, if you wish, solder these chips directly on to save you having to buy sockets. Not really recommended because if you have a fault, handy to be able to remove and replace. But what you have is an IC socket for each side, a gal chip for each side, and of course your pin headers. Now, your IC sockets fit on the outside, and you'll see that on each side there's this second row, right slap bang down the middle of the IC socket, and it's longer. This is the original PLA chip footprint. And Danielle has covered where the positioning is with the cutout showing pin one on both sides. And then we have the second one with a cutout there that shows the position of the PLA. So you should not get this wrong. He's also screen printed on C64U17 because the PLA chip is on U17. So everything is there for you. Now, to start with, you need to solder your pin strips. If you don't, how are you going to solder them now? So start off taking your pin strips. I know I've got a broken one here. Line them up. You've got a marking, so just snip them at the appropriate point and then do your second one. And with these, I'm now ready to solder. Now you'll note there is a long leg side and a short leg side with this built-in standoff. The built-in standoff should be on the underside and make sure you get your board the right way around. So you're going to have two of these, one either side, that sit in like that. Now, as you can see, soldering that's going to be interesting. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. My normal preference is to drop these onto a bit of prototyping breadboard, and that'll hold them quite nicely. Except for the fact I've no idea where I've put my prototyping breadboard. I can't find it at the moment. The second method is to take a motherboard, pop out the PLA, drop them in, solder two points, as Adrian did on his channel, lift it out, solder the rest. Or simply get yourself a socket and drop everything in. Now everything's held nicely, ready for soldering. So with that done, we can now pop the socket off. And now we need to fit these, paying attention to the cutout, which is at the top. Now we flip these over, and just as we did, we solder these ones on.
and that is the entire soldering done. Nothing else to solder, all finished. Next we need to look at programming the grout chips. Now I did do some basic testing on this when I received it just to make sure it was registering etc and it does seem fine. Let's open it up. So the whole thing is run and powered over USB and programmed over USB. Very basic unit. You've got a pass through if you want to use the connector that's in there to specifically plug into certain things. It's got a marking for USB on one side, which is this one. On the other side, it says IC and it means this socket. Now, you'll see the cutout for pin one, which means when you come to drop them in, your chips go right up against this end and then as a ZIF socket, just gets locked down. That's it now in place. Obviously for first powering on, I'm not going to have a gal chip in place. So let's plug this in and see what it says on the screen. So apologies for this bit. It's uh, a little bit wobbly, it's balanced on the table. However, you can see I've already got the software installed. I've installed the USB device driver. So now I can plug the programmer in. It's powering up. The beep from Windows saying it's detected. So now I can run the software. And immediately it says programmer connected. So I can take my first gal chip, drop it in and lock. I'm going to go up and select gal 20, select the 20V8B. going to open from the desktop the left JED program downloaded direct off Danny's website link in the description and because I'm using the 25 nanosecond I am happy using the standard LJED you can see all the ones and zeros and now, hopefully, I can go to device, program. I don't want to lock it. I want to flash it, program. It's erasing the chip before programming and then verifying. So that is a successful left jed done. So I can now take this one out, get the board. And drop that one in. The dot showing pin one to be at the top. And I'm going to do exactly the same. This time, I'm going to select the right JED file. And you can see all ones and zeros. And again, device program. I'm not going to do the lock bit because I want to be able to verify it. Program. Again, it's detected that then it passed the gal. Erasing, programming, verifying, done. So that is now the right one done. Much easier two-handed. Again, making sure they all line up with this time a notch at the top rather than the dot and push it into place and 
if I've done everything right, that's it. That's ready to drop in and test. So let's have a look and see what happens when we drop this in to replace the PLA. So here we are ready for testing. And first thing I'm going to do is going to power up this system just to confirm it's working with the original PLA. There we go, straight in, no problems at all. So doing exactly what it should. Now I'm going to pop this PLA out, taking care because I've had to repair one of the legs on this. And we'll take the one that we made earlier and drop it in, making sure notch is the right way around. And now we'll test. Hopefully this should power up. And there we go, we have a Commodore 64. So, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the dead test. I'm not going to bother with the harness because this machine's already been done. And let's see what it says. Now everything's running so far. Obviously we want to make sure that U17 registers fine. We are going to get some errors because I don't have the harness connected, but that's fine. The key thing is U17. So there we go. It's passed. U17, as you can see, is running fine. No errors. We've built a very cheap and cost-effective replacement PLA. So that's great news for anybody looking to refurbish one of these machines and they've got a bad PLA. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this was semi-informative. Please remember to like and subscribe and the next videos are going to be recorded well in advance because I'm going to take a well-earned holiday. However, I will see you on the next Retro Crazy.